Well, welcome back, everybody. This is Dane and Coleman from Managed by Stats, and I have here with me Chris Basmeji from Benetago. And if you haven't heard of Benetago, it's because they are fairly new to the arena, and they are an aggregator. And before you go, uh, whoa, 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 aggregator, um, I, I'd like I'd like Chris to tell us um, a little bit about. Oh my gosh, I'm messing this whole computer up. Okay, sorry. <clears throat> I hope you're not getting, are you hearing um, notifications? Good. Nope. Nope, it's, com it's coming through. Uh, we're bumping in it. Okay, good. Probably should have done that before we started, but you know what? It's too late for that. So uh, Chris is going to kind of tell us. Quite all right. <laughs> Chris is going to tell us the state of the uh, aggregator space right now, and we're going to discuss what, what, what's going on. Um, and many of you who are listening to this have been to Prosper and you and Prosper uh, in 2021 was like 40% aggregators or something like that. So uh, Chris, hi, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for being here and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Do you like long walks down short piers down the beach, etc.? I do enjoy the beach. Thank you okay, for yeah. having me, Dana. Yeah, you're um, welcome. I think uh, I think this conversation is, is like super important, just given the state of the aggregator space. Mm -hmm. uh, there's just like this mystification, this fog kind of over everything. And uh, before I get into that about me, um, I originally come from the investment banking world, so a lot of people would probably go, "Oh boy, what's going on?" <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I left for a reason. Um, and I think what a lot of people see in the aggregator space is a lot of that attitude. And uh, I spent a lot of time in, in tech, most recently at DoorDash. Um, I built out the sales team at DoorDash on the East Coast. We basically were the last to market over in New York City, uh, was put on the strategic initiative team in New York City to kind of uproot Grubhub and become the number one player in the space. How we did that was by building relationships, shaking hands, looking people in the eyes and really getting to understand their businesses. Along came Benetago. Um, we had a, I had a conversation with the CEO, Santi, talked to him about how we did it at DoorDash. He was very aligned with that type of way of building relationship and building out a business. Said, here you go, here's the keys, let's go do it again. Let's go replicate that process and kind yeah. of um, make a change in the aggregator space versus you know just kind of like the beating over the head with money and just yeah. trying to get businesses at a, we'll, we'll, at, at a good multiple. We'll probably talk about that methodology in a little while, huh? Yeah, I, I think so. I yeah. think so. All right, cool. Well, good. So um, I'd like to start off with providing the audience um, a little bit of information uh, where if they're, if they're curious about selling their business, um, what sort of things should they have in place in order to be prepared for that sale? This is a hot topic for me because I just got an email from somebody uh, with messy financials. You have to have your financials in order um, in a way in which you would almost be the way I would the way I would describe it is, is if you were in college and you were giving a presentation or you're in high school and you're giving a presentation with a slide deck and everything is organized in a concise manner, make it very easily digestible for somebody you're giving the information to. Mm -hmm. So that would include uh, a PL statement back to 2019, so three years worth of data if you have okay. it, just to get a good idea of year over year growth. Um, Amazon business reports with parent SKUs and child SKUs, SKU counts, we'll get into this, is a very, very important metric to know, understand, and have clean um, when you're looking to sell. Um, and any type of information you have around suppliers, um, the mm. fewer the suppliers, the manager, that's even better because if you have four different suppliers and it's one person managing the relationship, it's technically only one. So right. in short, p &L for the past three years, if you have it, uh, Amazon business report for parent SKU, child SKU, um, and any documentation you can usually provide around suppliers. Um, if you can get that together in a organized and concise manner, um, you're already speeding along the process because now I have to schedule three calls with the financial documents that I just got before this, uh, before we started recording this and got to figure out where this is going and where that's going. And it's just going to muddy up the process and it's going to just take an extra week or two because of it. So. All right. I think, I think perhaps the moral of the story here is organization greases lines, right? That 
is right. Oh, yeah. big time. It doesn't yeah, matter what, exactly. what aspect of life we're talking about. This is your life tip for, for your, your life <laughs> tip from Danon. Or keep yourself organized and you'll have an easier and smoother time of things. You're welcome. I don't really e-commerce. Life tips as well. Yeah, exactly. Ju this just in. We also do life tips. Marriage counseling. Okay. All right. So le let's get into the uh, aggregator space. What's going on there? What's going on? Um, well, after going to Prosper, you would think that the the <laughs> the sky is falling and the aggregator model is failing. Yeah. Um, and being somebody who's been in uh, industry changing tech and watch the uh, the food the third party food delivery space go from no way absolutely not you're going to destroy my business to an absolute necessity almost overnight. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's I think it's in a point of maturing um, okay. in any type of emerging technology or emerging market where there's a lot of money flowing. Um, a lot of crazy decisions get made in the beginning when money is, I call it stupid cheap, right? It feels like you can spend anything you want. We just went through an economy where the interest rates were super low. Everybody was spending, going out to dinner, inflation was super low, and now it's changing. And mm -hmm. it kind of goes along with the, the model as well. Like there's only a, a certain amount of time you can have that, uh, I guess you can call like limitless party when it comes to the money before the, the chickens come to roost and you actually have to start figuring out what you're doing. Right. So I think what you're seeing is um, a lot of the a lot of the people who came in the beginning, they were really good at fundraising. They were really good at telling investors where their you know what what their mission was, where they were going. Um, and then when you acquire all this business, all of a sudden it's like, well, we actually have to operate these things. This mm -hmm. isn't a tech company. We're not selling the software. Um, we have physical products that we have to take care of, supplier relationships. Yep. Um, you can't scale like tech. Tech, you can scale like crazy. You can go from 1,000 people to 10,000 people, over, not overnight, but basically over overnight. <laughs> because you have something that is not actual physical that you're holding in your hands. You yeah. actually have products. Um, and what a lot of aggregators are starting to see is um, scaling like that is not uh, conducive to profitability and investors mm -hmm. start looking into things and they're like, okay, well, what are we going to do now? And not only to mention is you have to be an expert in the Amazon space. If you want to take somebody who built a business in e-commerce yeah. and bring it to the next level. Not only that, sometimes you have to be an expert in the subspace of that in order to make, uh, be, be successful because, you know, if you're selling, I'll give you a perfect example of, of an old client of mine. This is before, actually even before, uh, I think before I was even in e-commerce, she sells baby wraps now. And, and you know, when I first saw the name wrap your baby, I was like, what, what the hell is that? Right. Excuse me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but they're just these really, really long, beautiful pieces of nice soft cloth and you, and y you, you become an expert at tying very unusual shapes and then your baby fits in there. So that, that, like that community is like, there are certain kind of people, you know, like, don't get me wrong. I love whatever the baby carrier is that I have where I can take my baby sticker right here, clip, clip done. But to, to wrap a wrap around me and it's like a 48 foot piece of material that I have to do yoga to get on? No, thanks. That's not me. So if you're selling that in, on Amazon, you'd better know your customer and you better and, know why that's important. Exactly. It's not all about dollars and cents at that point. There's exactly. A more to it than just the, the binary figures. If you will. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, cool. Now I think this is a good opportunity for me to mention what I like about Benetago. And that is that Benetago is comprised of and created by successful Amazon sellers. Yes. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So you, you've been brought in to scale it, but the, but the, uh, the people behind the curtain are, are actually, and, and are actually successful Amazon sellers and have SOPs in place. So when a brand is acquired, they have trained personnel who are trained in Amazon. Yeah. That's right. Uh, we're, we, our foundation is rooted in Amazon selling, um, mm -hmm. our story and you can go on our website and read it, but 
it, it I feel like sometimes it doesn't hit home as much because everybody's enthralled with like everybody's marketing and fancy colors and stuff. But when it gets down to like the root of it with Benetago, it's two college roommates who built a seven figure Amazon business said, wow, we really know, have something here. We know what to do with it. Let's continue doing it and mm -hmm. launch more products and more products and more products. Um, and when you have that and you've done that and they had been doing it since 2016, and then you see this aggregator space come up, it's like, well, why don't we just go find the smartest people who know how to do these mergers and acquisitions yeah. transactions? Why don't we go find these people who know how to build relationships and, and create that and get them into the door? And it's a win-win situation because we know what we do. We know what we like to focus on. We know the markets where we can succeed the most. And mm -hmm. let's just build this great portfolio of awesome brands. Like the end goal is not just to make a ton of money. The end goal is to have an awesome portfolio of brands that we've taken, we've launched ourselves, we've launched brands alongside of acquiring brands still. Um, mm -hmm. We still incubate our own products. Yeah, I was gonna say that. You've unique. got an incubation system in place, don't you? That's right. Yep. We launch brands. We launch, we launch products alongside of um, the acquisitions that we do. And I was recently having a conversation with somebody about uh, somebody at Prosper about it. I was talking to another incubator, Smart Brand Labs, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, super, super smart people. And uh, we were talking about the risk of being just an acquisition based company. Yeah. Right. You have to be on point with every acquisition you make. Um, and let's be real, like, everybody's a human being, you're going to make mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. Things are going to happen. And I think the ones that can weather the storm are the ones who actually know what they're doing because they are Agreed. launching products. They are diversified basically. Yeah. And I think that's going to be the model of success moving forward. Yeah. I said it at, at Prosper 2021, as soon as I saw what, what was out there and what was going on, I said, I, I'll bet you a significant percentage of, of these companies are going to have a rocket ride up and, a, and a, a failure to exit the atmosphere down, you know, and just come crashing down and then start offloading all kinds of stuff. Um, well, okay, cool. So uh, what do you foresee is going to be happening in the next, uh, let's just call it, let's call it the rest of this year. We've got a fair amount. The remainder of 2022, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot's going to happen, and uh, you'll hear me say the term maturing. I think the market's mm -hmm. going to continue to mature. Um, and what that means is, right, everybody heard and everybody wanted to talk about it. Every time I met with a potential client at the networking tables at Prosper, it was, we were looking around and they would hear about all the big guys pulling out. Um, and that doesn't mean the industry is failing. That means maybe they're taking a second to pull back and reassess and figure out what it is the plan, the most successful plan is moving forward. Yeah. But one thing is certain that when you have some of the bigger players in the space slowing down, pulling out temporarily, when you pull that money out, all that money that they had fundraised that they were using to acquire, um, you're going to watch multiples start to cool off a little bit. The same yeah. way in the housing market right now, houses are up 30 percent mortgage uh interest rates are super high it has to cool off after all it has to mature it has to get realistic yeah um and i think that is going to be the first step i think when you see money being pulled out i think multiples start coming back to earth a little bit um mm -hmm. as an aggregator it sounds like a conflict of interest right but in in just being real uh, it has to Right, because for the market to function, for investors to feel comfortable lending money out to these aggregators, there's an end game where they're going to want to see profitability. They're not just going to yeah. want to see stupid money thrown around. It can't last forever. Are right? you, it can only last for a certain amount of time. Are you saying that free money is going to come to an end? <laughs> I, I don't know if it's going to come to an end, but it's going to slow down big time. I mm. think there's still a lot of people with a lot of money to throw around. Um, but just, you know, we always have our ear to the ground. We always want to know what's going on. We have relationships with other aggregators. And, yeah. and that is really the talk right now is what can we, what, what can we pinpoint as an accurate multiple uh, moving forward? What can we expect? And it, the, it, there's no definite number right now. But one thing is true is it's going to be lower than it is right now. Yeah, that was my biggest advice to anybody at Prosper was if you want max money now is your time. Yeah, if you wait um, and all you care about is money. Um, you're going to get caught, as they say, holding the bag right. um, at the end of the day. And you're not going to get that multiple that you want. Yeah. Well, that makes a lot of sense. OK, cool. So um, let's see what what 
What else should we talk about? We've, we've got a few minutes here. We've only been going about 15, 15 minutes or so. Uh, do you have any other uh, subjects that you'd like to discuss? I, I, I know we, we covered uh, what does a seller prepare, need to prepare for sale? Um, and, and the answer on that is good organization. Uh, the state of the aggregator space, all right, so things are maturing. It doesn't necessarily mean that things are going to hell in a handbasket although it probably will in, in some cases for some people. And maybe there's yeah. going to be an aggregator for aggregators. Yeah, but it's uh, already starting to happen a little bit. Oh, has it? Oh, well, there you go. Geez, I should be in the future to tell the future rather than the past to no, tell the future. Life advice, e-commerce advice, and a little bit of Nostradamus at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeez, what am I doing in just the e-commerce space? I should be like a you're sage selling. on top of a mountain or something. Yeah, you're selling yourself short, Dan. <laughs> well, cool. Anything else that you want to cover, or should we just kind of cut this short and make it a short episode? And um, I think one one thing, um, one other, and this is in the the sake of transparency, and mm -hmm. this obviously doesn't benefit me. So, um, it's how to approach aggregators and oh, how to yeah. start sourcing right on my end my whole job is to source some of the best acquisitions we do some due diligence work up front we can mm -hmm. get a good feeling of profit and all that good stuff but do, you cut out what, there for a second you say you get you get a good feeling for profit good feeling for profit revenue uh, we can look at review counts and start figuring out mm -hmm. like if it's going to fit our methodology and i emphasis our <laughs> methodology because yes. no two are the same um, and you should know that when you're going into these uh -oh. just like random inbounds to us. It's when I look at them, like this is not even close to a fit half of the time. And they don't know that it's a, not a fit half the time. They just think every aggregator has this big pocketbook to pull money out of and they're just going to get acquired. When in reality, some of them focus on specific categories. Like we only focus on four main specific categories and a very specific revenue um, size. Some of them are really big. Some of them only like really small transactions. Mm -hmm. So a really important thing so that you're not wasting your time because once you get to the due diligence phase, you know, there's a lot of effort that goes into that. Yeah. Understanding who to approach for what. Um, I can't give you the lowdown on every single aggregator in the industry, but I would yeah. definitely say a really good piece of advice is do your homework on them. Mm -hmm. oh, do diligence it. calls, start passing information. My so, back, we may have yeah, yeah, bad yeah. internet so, connection. Yeah, so I, we last basically heard do your do your homework on them, and then and then diligence was the next word. So do your homework yeah. on the aggregator. Yep. Do do your due diligence. Right? Yeah. I think a lot of people a lot of people the seller and I'm looking up at this giant aggregator and they're gonna tell me how it goes. Mm -hmm. Um but if you do your homework and you understand and you already know oh, Benetago, they operate in the home decor space, the baby space, um, you know, the health and beauty space and the supplement space. Well, if you're not in any of those categories, you know not to you yeah. know, maybe it's not gonna be the best fit. We'll find somebody who is. Um, when you do your homework a little bit, it shows. Um, mm -hmm. I can tell when I'm speaking to somebody who who has either spoken to an aggregator before or has done enough research where they feel very informed and they're serious about the process. Cool. So if you're serious about selling, do that homework. It's it's going to be so apparent to the person that you're speaking to, and it will help your credibility a million times over. Okay, good deal. So then, why don't we end off with this? Why don't can you give us a couple of questions that a seller should ask an aggregator or for that matter, perhaps even a, uh, um, a broker? What, what sorts of questions should they ask and get answers to? What's the largest transaction you've done to date? Okay. Once you get that answer, how many transactions have you done at that level? Doing one at 20 million doesn't mean that they're a specialist at 20 million. That 20 million could have been an absolute disaster and they're better in the $1 million range. Yeah. Um, most of the time they won't tell you who they've acquired. There's sure. probably some special cases, but what categories do you historically operate in? What categories are you comfortable with? Um, that's an important question because like for a lot of these, uh, a lot of sellers, um, it's your baby. You want to see it do well, so you want to you want to hand your baby to somebody who knows how to take care of it. Yeah. So ask questions about the space. Um, 
ask about their LOI close rate. A lot of mm. a lot of times, letter of intent, say, folks. Le- letter of intent. Yep. A lot of times, what will happen is you'll get a letter of intent for that multi, multi, multi million dollars that you've been looking for and you've been dreaming the whole time. Mm-hmm. And that company only has a fifty percent close rate on those LOIs. So, what does mm. that LOI actually mean? Yeah, um, that's an important part of the a, a, a very, very important part of that to get so that information. Up let front. me put you on the spot. What's your LOI close rate? One hundred percent. It's right on the website. It's something we pride ourselves in. We oh, turn okay. away a lot. We, we turn away a lot more uh, than we acquire because we were very specific, and I, yeah. I work very closely with the M and A team, mm-hmm. and they do not want to put their reputation on the line. They they want to make sure it, it works for both people. Cool. So, I, I support that methodology for sure. In. Okay, yeah. cool. We'd much rather be a little. We'd much rather be a little bit more cautious and, and stick to that. This way, you know, you're working with somebody. Who, is actually going to hold uh, hold up to their word. Um, yeah. We don't issue LOIs unless we're very very confident that we're closing on it. Cool. All right. Well, that's great. Uh, what other questions? Anything else? You could always always ask um, like general questions just about the due diligence process, how long it takes. For the mm-hmm. most part, with 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 Benetago, it's about a month. I've heard stories okay. of three, four, five months with others. Wow. Kinda, People get dragged through the mud, and there's a term called a retrade, right? Where it's like, oh well, one month in, it looks good. We're going to give you five million, and then three months later, there's a retrade, and it's like, well, you know what? Actually, it's two million. Half of that's in cash, and half of that's in equity in the aggregator fund. And then you're like, wait a second, we started yeah. at five a month ago. Um, Hmm. So asking questions like just getting a good feeling for that is really important because like this is the biggest business decision you're going to make and you want to make sure you have a good relationship with that person because it could get ugly. Yeah. 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 I imagine uh, now I've heard some people getting large payouts. This is we're talking a year ago, you know, like obscene payouts where I was like, okay, I'm going to sell mine because (laughs) it's it would take me five years to make that. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah. Awesome. I, I think that's very helpful then. Um, so I can't think of anything else to ask you mostly because I'm on the spot right now and I don't know <laughs> what I'm doing in life, but, uh, cool. Those I, are some of the best conversations. It's conversational. It's not scripted. We're not yeah. trying to get a message across. We're just being transparent. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I prefer to kind of wing it. Like, I like to get an, an idea of what, like, if I didn't already know who you were, I'd be like, uh, so we have with us Chris Basmeji. Uh, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? What, what do you do? What's your importance in yeah. life? Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, so, I, you know, I, I, I work with, with a, a number of aggregators and as managed by stats because we are doing software for them. Um, and I, I have to say, I, I really like the position that Benetago is coming from. So if, if somebody's interested, let's say they're in the, you said supplements, baby, home and garden. Home decor and, home and decor, beauty okay. space. And beauty, okay, good. So not pool toys then, fine. I mean, we can make exceptions. That's our bread and butter, but we can look at things that are somewhat related. All right. Sports and outdoors, Damascus knives. No, no. (laughs) (laughs) I won't say no, but for the most part, no. (laughs) Yeah, okay. (laughs) April Uh, Fools, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I'm not selling that brand. I I love it. Anyhow, uh, good. So how does somebody reach out to Benetago? Um, easiest way is to go to our website. Uh, Mm -hmm. we have a free evaluation request form, uh, which comes to me. So you get to talk to me. Um, Mm -hmm. what I would basically be doing is schedule a call with you just to get a feel for your business and what you're looking to do. Um, then we, if you, you know, if it seems like a fit, we would request those financial documents that I was talking about. Um, and then you're kind of off to the races or, I mean, if you want to make it easier, find me on LinkedIn, add me, uh, send me a message if you have questions on things. Um, I always like to be a resource. I felt like that's what I was doing at Prosper this year because everybody had so many questions. So I yeah. always tell people, if you have questions, ask because you're you're not always going to get the right answers. So you have to, you just have to find the people who are going to give you 
the real. <laughs> They're yeah. not going to give you the pitch. They're going to give you the real. And yeah. I, I truly think that's important. That's just somebody I who couldn't agree more. Cares about the relationship. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So, so uh, just for our listeners, before we actually started recording this, I was basically admitting to Chris, I had no idea what I'm doing in life. I have no official training and <laughs> what what it is that I'm doing. And so when when it comes to like. I have a problem with not knowing what I don't know. Therefore, I don't know what a- what questions to ask. So, um, I've never I've never dealt with Wall Street level anything, let alone the corporate world at all. Uh, this is this working for Managed by Stats is the only place I've worked in 12, 12 years. So, you know, and uh, if. If you, if Chris is making himself available for the questions, uh, by all means, reach out to him because we're talking about, in many cases, when you're looking to sell your business, we're talking about people coming from or having ties to the Wall Street area. And that's a whole nother breed of business and human. You know, some humans leave because of perhaps other humans in the area. Uh, I wanted my soul back. I wanted my soul back. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Well, in the Amazon space, we welcome you with open arms, and you may have your soul. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. It feels good to have it back. Not, not no offense to anybody who might be listening to this. It's still in the banking world. I'm sure there's good people, but it was not for me. It was not for me at all. We'll leave your address out uh, so you don't get any glitter bombs or anything like that in your mail. <laughs> All right, yeah. cool, guys. Well, thank you, Chris, for being on the podcast. And thank you, Benetago, for allowing me to have him on here. And thank you for the listeners. If you have any questions, uh, reach out on the comments. This will be on YouTube, Spotify, Pandora, uh, whatever, the, all the other ones and stuff like that. So All streaming platforms. Yeah, exactly. So cool. We'll go ahead and end it here. And anyone that's interested in uh, getting a hold of Chris or Benitago, just go to their website, benitago.com, B-E-N-I-T-A-G-O.com. Did I spell that right? You did. Yes. (laughs) All right. Thank you very much for listening. See you guys later. Thank you.